something? Do I need to wax my board? That depends, but one thing is for sure. You will need to wax your board less often if you follow the four rules you're going to pick up in this video. Let's get after it. Jeremy Tracy here of Tracy Crokinole Boards. If you like Crokinole, then like this video. If you subscribe to Having Fun, then subscribe to our channel. If you share in our belief that this is the greatest game on earth, then share this video. And if you comment, I got nothing for this one, but we invite you to comment. Now let's dig into the four rules that are going to help you keep your board fast and slick. And what this means is that you should need to wax your board less often. Now when we use the word rules, we use that very loosely because I would say these are more like guidelines. The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. And I will tell you straight up that although I agree with all of these rules that I personally don't follow or enforce all of these rules. And this first rule is a fantastic example of that. A rule that I've heard some people have around their crokinole board is that there is absolutely no food or drink allowed. The idea behind this rule is that when you're snacking, you're going to get crumbs on the board or in the gutter, or you're even just going to have crumbs and the grease from your food on your hands, which transfers to the buttons and the board, slowing things down. And when it comes to drinks, so many of them are sugary, and again, that is not ideal to be getting onto your board. It's just going to slow things down, meaning you need to wax it more often. When I say I don't follow this rule, here's my reasoning. I want my crokinole board to be a very social place. If you want a snack, have a snack. If you want to have a bevy, have a bevy. Now, when it comes to snacks, I would suggest if you shoot with your right hand, I'd encourage you to snack with your left hand. Again, just reducing the chance of transfer. Not at the same time and certainly not over the board, but I do encourage you to snack because you could find yourself sitting here for quite a while. And if you want to have a beer or a pop or a coffee or whatever, please be my guest. Personally, I want my crokinole board to be an extremely inviting environment for everyone. Absolutely everyone. Now that said, if you roll up with a bowl of buttery popcorn, that ain't gonna fly. And as far as the bevies go, same thing. Be my guest, enjoy that beverage, but I would, would encourage you to be careful around the board. I mean, you certainly don't want to be doing a sloppy cheers over top of the board for obvious reasons. And please drink responsibly. Anyway, as I weigh out the pros and cons, the way I see it, if you allow food and drink around your board, it will mean that you have a more social, relaxed environment. And at the same time, it could mean you find yourself needing to re-wax your board and buttons a little more often, so the choice is up to you. Now the next rule, rule number two that we are going to talk about is actually a tournament rule at the World Crokinole Championships. It is such a natural thing for a player to want to hold the buttons in their hand while they're waiting to shoot. Now the reason for the rule at the World Championships is that as you hold your hands, it, they have a tendency to be, to be sweaty and the oils and everything coming off your hands will gum up the buttons for lack of a better expression. So when I say it's a rule, it's not like you're going to get this qualified and thrown out. It's just a very strong recommendation for a very good reason. They want to keep the board and the button moving fast and fun. Where are they? Are your buttons in your bowl? It really is pretty simple. All you need to do is get into the habit of leaving your buttons on the table beside the board. And then when it's your turn to shoot, you simply pick up a single button so you're not getting all oily on it, and then you take your shot. When I weigh out the pros and cons of this, as far as I'm concerned, it's just the habit that you get into. If you can get yourself into the habit of leaving them here, picking them up one at a time, it's just going to keep those buttons faster and not needing to be waxed as often. You're probably gonna find the lifespan of those buttons is a lot better for you as well. It is always great to see someone's crokinole board sitting out on the table where it's easy to see. Next thing you know, somebody walks in, looks at us, says, cool, what's that? Let's play. And just like that, another person has fallen in love with the greatest game on earth. Now the downside of having your board out on the table all the time is that dust can settle on it, cats can walk across it. The next thing you know, there's other creatures that are trying to walk on it. 
Shameless plug, if you have one of our wall brackets, you're still going to have people walk in, see the board, say, cool, what's that? Let's play and fall in love. And it's also going to be safe from dust settling, critters walking on it, or even having people set stuff on your board that has no business being set on a coconut board. But even without the wall bracket, it's still a great idea to store it vertically. You can simply lean it against the wall behind a sofa, a dresser, the back of a closet, it's not going to be seen and noticed as much, but you're still going to have the benefits of the lack of dust and critters walking on it. Regardless of whether you store your board horizontally or vertically, our rule number four can absolutely be your friend. Whether it's leaned against the wall or underneath your bed, keeping your board protected is always a fantastic idea. Another shameless plug is for our carry bag. What this will allow you to do is once it's in the bag, you can hang it on the wall or on the back of the door. And even if you're just tucking it behind the sofa or in the closet, that bag is going to keep the dust and the critters off. And it's just going to offer an extra layer of protection for your most prized possession. Precious. And if you don't have a carry bag, all you need is a large towel or a blanket, even a big piece of cardboard, something that if it's under the bed can go over top to keep the dust out. If it's lean somewhere, it can go against the face just again for that extra layer of protection, keep it from getting bumped and hit. So to recap, there are four rules that are going to help you not need to wax your board as often. We had the no food and drink, the potential rule of no food and drink around your table. We also talked about not holding the buttons in your hand. That's a simple one that can make a big difference over the long term. Then we talked about storing your board vertically instead of horizontally, and then ultimately whatever you do, just keeping it protected. Did we miss anything? If we did, please put your comments down below. I have a comment. Not you. But anyone else, please go ahead and share your thoughts or ideas that will help other people keep their board fast and fun. And until next time, have fun playing the greatest game on earth. Precious. It's a simple line. I crushed that other sh We talked about, what was rule number two? I don't even remember. Bird, bird. How do you store your bird? <laughs> and drink around, did I say that right? Or did I screw something up? Almost stabbed myself in the eye with a peg there. Don't recommend that. Yeah. Yep. Say it. Roll. Stop there. What kind of a legendary rant? Jeremy Tracy, stop laughing at me.